Leah, love, um, I'm going to need you to hold the fort for a bit. Um, uh, yeah, are, are you all right? Uh, no, not really. Um, uh, we've got an appointment with a lawyer in Yabby Creek. Yeah, John's going to drive me in. Why do you need to see a lawyer? I, uh, I could be in a bit of trouble, that's all. Yeah. Irene was being a good Samaritan and she hid Harper's sister, Dana. But Dana's been cleared of everything now, but she was on the run at the time. What is it with you and the verbal diarrhoea Irene, today? Irene, are you OK? Love, to be honest, I don't know. This is what I'm hoping to find out from the lawyer. OK. Let me know how you go. Yeah, right? thank you, I will. Yeah, all right. We are Science Sophie. This is Coastal News, a home and away podcast. Your weekly episode companion podcast for your favourite Aussie soap. I've had a mince pie. Have you? It's, it's begun. It's November. <laughs> <laughs> it's begun. I've declared it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Yeah. Um, well, if you've had yeah. one, I want one now. Well, oh. go for it. In, it was an impulse buy. <laughs> it was lovely. It warmed it up and everything. Oh, oh mm. If I start mm. them now, I'm going to be the size of a house by January. Well, that will make two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to be a, we'll have to be a semi. <laughs> two. Fair enough. Double drive, double driveway, if you don't mind. Oh, of <laughs> I don't want you parking on my side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you? You okay? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Listen, mm. listen, penultimate season three podcast. What? Oh. Where's the time gone? Feels a bit weird, this, doesn't it? Feels a bit weird. Mm. This time ready. next week, we'll be done and dusted for season three of Coastal News. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not. It means the C word's going to be here soon. I'm not ready for that either. <laughs> get a bit of pie down. You'll get in the mood. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'll try it. I'll try. Um, um, have you checked out? You may have mm. seen this week an extra bonus episode, round two, ding, 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 of our Versus series with the guys over at the Neighbourhood Rewatch. Have you seen it? Mm. Heard it, rather. Yes. Yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you were there. <laughs> you have to listen to me banging on for most of it. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Well, we did death, didn't we? We pitted five yeah. five of our... We, it was hard to choose five home and away deaths, I will say. We didn't, the weeks five were generated. Five out 140-odd or whatever it was. Yeah, we, we, we were reminded of. Um, <laughs> yes, five deaths against five deaths on on Neighbours. Um, so go and check it out. Find out which deaths we chose. Interesting, I, I think we went for some quite eclectic choices, personally. Mm, um, it was so hard to whittle it down just to five. Yeah, uh, and it was good fun hearing that Neighbours is just as mad when it comes yeah. to <laughs> killing yeah. off characters. Yes. Yeah. Um, so go and check that out. Yeah, that's both on our feed. It'll be the episode before this, and it'll be on the Neighbourhood Rewatch feed as well. Link in the episode description. Uh, go and check them out. They also recap Neighbours uh, on Amazon Freebie, um, much like we do um, every week. Um, to give you the best neighbours chat after the week's episodes. But until then, you've also got home and away, don't forget, and we'll be taking you right through to the UK season finale on the 16th of November next on Thursday, um, or Friday if you're a repeat viewer on Channel 5 lunchtime. Boo, it's bad times. Mm. Also... Gosh, so much stuff here to go through. <laughs> um, you may have seen, you may not have seen, if not, where have you been? Because we've been shouting loud about it. We are doing a social meetup of podcast listeners and Home and Away viewers in March next year. Where? Manchester. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. On the 16th of March. Absolute free event. You've just got to get there. Um, more people are booking um spaces are filling up book your space for free um it's going to be a really good day i've started putting pen to paper 
things you know the things mm. we're planning for the day it's going to be a yeah. really fun fun day and it'd be great to meet and chat home and away with everybody yeah. um so do um do check that out and try and get there if you can it'd be great to see as many of you as possible right do you want your headlines i do felicity spells it out for tane rue is discharged from hospital but her war with marilyn is far from over Marley struggles to keep a lid on his new moonlight job as a lap dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there was a bit of a poetic license in that one. <laughs> and, and John tells Irene to lawyer up as her jailhouse worries start to grow. Please take the time to like, subscribe and review Coastal News wherever you source your podcasts and ensure you never miss an episode. Right, Lyric in a minute, for those that are so inclined, do you have a stopwatch ready? I do, for once. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not even sure the content I've got will make it to a minute, um, but I'm quite good at filling it out with herms and ours, so let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. I'm Why in a not? weird mood today. Is it because I'm sober? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who knows? Um, Who knows? I'm in a weird mood most days and I don't know why. So. <laughs> I'm way too energetic. <laughs> um, count you in? Yeah, you, in. Go, I'm... <laughs> you go. You go three, two, one, and then I'll ping the button when you start talking. Three, two, one. Kirby's solo single is fast approaching, or the launch, should I say, but John's invite got lost in the post, didn't it? <laughs> oh dear, never mind, she doesn't want oldies like he and Irene around anyway. Oi, bless her, the old, you clots, I'm only 72. Kirby, <laughs> she's been told what to wear <laughs> um, by everybody around her. Remember, this whole look of this solo era for Kirby isn't what she's envisaged for herself, is it? And the cracks are starting to show. Forrest is sending a thing she's got to wear. She's confided in Rose about how overwhelmed she is about all this. And after a wobble about missing Eden, because Eden would normally help her decide what to wear, she puts a poll on the internet and lets any old Tom, Dick and Harry decide anyway. Remy is elsewhere beating himself up about some session that he's been doing. He's writing riffs for another band and recording on their album, doing exactly what he begged someone his, you know, somebody he did, who also gifted him a motorcycle, don't forget, for his album, but he's got a big problem doing it for somebody else. It's stop. not what he wanted. There stop, we go. Stop, stop, Sorry. <laughs> I pretty much covered most of it, to be fair. He did good. I feel Part really big... rude when I have to interrupt you. Yeah. <laughs> Something about whiskey and pasta was all you missed. Yeah. There was yeah, a lot lots of, of that. Pasta and mm. looking at the sea in a brooding, brooding manner. Yeah, like you do. Because yeah. I quite like this, though. I know we weren't going to talk about lyric, but the, the location that Remy ended up in on his bike, you know, because I think it was like a substitute for the, you know, when they used to go to the pier and look yeah. at the sea and be wistful yeah. and nostalgic and all that sort of stuff. And they've got this new place, which we've not seen before, where Remy was sort of standing there looking out to see and John came up for a chat, didn't he? So I was quite enjoying yeah. the, the view, to be honest. Yeah, and John was a babe. Oh, he? such a he babe. A babe. Such a babe. a babe. Yeah. Right, speaking of babes, <laughs> Danny <laughs> and Felicity. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this debate continues this week. Um, yeah. She was telling him, though, didn't she? Look, I never lied to you. You know... You looked me in the in the eyes and you said I was enough when I told you mm. didn't want kids. And, you know, you had your chance. All the things we went over last week, you know, yeah. he, you know she, she spelled it out to him. Uh, could she have been any clearer, basically? The answer mm. is no. Um, and she's like, am I still enough for you? We said this, didn't we? The cracks now are between them. He's shown his hand. Sophie's yeah. shown his hand. What's going to happen now? It's always going to be there, eating him away. The what ifs, the what buts, isn't it? Mm. Um, he says he'll be fine, but he just needs time to get his head around it. It's like, oh, God's sake. She does confide in Eden. There was a scene um, with Eden and, and Flick, wasn't there, where she sort of says, look, you know, digging your heels in and then coming round eventually is kind of what you do. Like, yeah. is, are you sure this is a, a red line? 
Mm. And Eden says, uh, sorry, Felicity says, yeah, it is. So then goes and go, doubles down on it in this whole campfire scene, which was a gorgeous scene, actually, mm. with Tane. And, he's, you know, he's like, oh, the reasons don't matter. You know, I respect it. I just want you. And she's like, I want to be clear. Yeah. It's a no for now. And I thought, you confusing woman. Yeah. Why does she say for now he's hanging, he's, there's hope now, he's hanging on to those words, isn't he? Is is it because she's scared of losing him? I don't um, know. Do you, do you, you don't think it was a Freudian slip? I don't think like Eden got into her head type thing. You just think, you know, she's, yeah, she, to, to keep know. him. Mm. I don't know. I can see it from all angles, really. I mean, yeah, she could have just said for now. It might just be a turn of phrase, you know, like, oh, I don't feel like it for now. Mm. which is just something you say isn't it and it's not doesn't mean you're ever going to change your mind it's just just a phrase or like you say she could be thinking well Eden's pointed out a few things and yes I didn't want to get married and yes I didn't want to put roots down and I'm doing those things now so maybe you know in 10 years time I'll change my mind maybe it's that but maybe it's the fact that she knows now his true feelings on it and you know she's mm. worrying that he's he, he's you know he's going to leave that's interesting, actually. I hadn't considered that uh, that option. Um, mm. and now you've got me thinking. God, it's a mess, this, isn't it? I don't even and know I'm if she's s- she's aware of it though. Like, I don't know whether this is all subconscious or whether she's actually aware that she's doing it. Because sometimes with Flick, it's not obvious, is it? That she's. I just don't. I think mm. she's quite. I think she's been really good at spelling it out up until that point. She, you know, she yeah. was saying, like, this is it for me. I've already told you I'm not going to change my mind. This is something I don't want to do, blah, blah, blah. And then it was kind of like a, a thoughtless way of, this is what she does. She kind of just says things without really thinking them through. Mm. And it, that for now, it could have been just flick being care- careless with how she's, I don't know. I, I, it, all it told me was that this isn't the end of the conversation and we're going to see more of this yeah that's true that's also what I took away from it mm. I, I'm, I've literally written oh lordy he has hope <laughs> on my notes <laughs> um, because, <laughs> because, it's because, not like preaching <laughs> oh lord give me Kumbaya. hope mm-hmm. um, bring yeah. out the child <laughs> The, the, well, the thing is, as someone who is desperate for it now, you mm-hmm. know, he's going to hang on to those little words that might pass you by. Yes. You know, yeah. at any other time. He's yeah. going to really hold her to that, isn't he? He's going gonna... to come back and ask her again. You know, mm. if this conversation hasn't gone away because he's, you know, he he was saying to Cash, I needed to ask. I didn't want to die no, not knowing. And, you know, or another turn of phrase that you say. Um, so I don't think it's going to go away. I think he's probably going to think, well, my timing was bad. I'll ask again in a year. You know, I just think yeah. it's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. One of them. I think it's, or maybe not even a year. Maybe it'll be quicker than that. But I don't think this is going away. Um, no. I think you've won me over. I think you're right. She's kicking the can down the road so he doesn't leave her. I yeah. She, I don't know mm. whether she's doing it on purpose or whether she's, I don't know, subconsciously wanting to do it. <sighs> I don't know. I just I've got a bad feeling. I've got a bad feeling. Mm. I just what I didn't like about this was she said to, like you know she started to say to him I don't want to do it because of these reasons and he and she was basically saying like the world's really bad. I don't want to bring a person into the world when it's like this etc. And he was like oh fear's not a good enough reason. I was like she, no Tani it's her decision and that whatever reason she comes up with y- you know you can't have you with that. I just find it really I find this really annoying as. <laughs> As a as a conversation, you know, when someone says, you know, like, because I don't have children and I'm not interested in having children, so I kind of feel like I'm in Flick's shoes a little bit yeah. um, when I hear this this conversation. It's something that's come up a lot in my life and having to say to people, no, it's not what I want. And nobody takes no for an answer. So I, I remember when I was younger, people would say, oh, you're changing mind. You're still young. You're changing mind. And I was like, no, I won't. I know what I want. And this is not what uh-huh. I want. And I'm, mm. you know, I'm getting to an age now where I'm, it's too late to have children. I haven't changed my mind. I don't want them. And it feels really annoying when someone tells you that you're going to change your mind. And you're like, no, I know my own mind. And it just irritates me. So it really does, like, trigger me, uh, yeah. this, this kind of conversation. Because for me, it's like someone saying to me, oh, Sophie, have you ever thought about being an accountant? And I'm like, no, I'm really bad at maths and I hate it. And I don't want to be an accountant. Never thought about being an accountant. 
And then them saying, well, you, I think you'd be really good. I think you'd be a really good accountant. You should think about it. Don't just dismiss it. Plenty of people are accountants out there, Sophie, and they make a, you know, a good living and they enjoy their lives. And yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be an accountant. And that's how it feels to me. Like when someone says, you'll change your mind about having kids. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. I know my own mind. Yeah, it's that. I don't want to say chauvinist ideology yeah. but it's like women are only there to bear children like yes. that's their sole only goal in life isn't it and but of it's course not just, it's not just yeah. men that tell you that though i've had plenty of, yeah. of ladies say to me oh you don't know love until you've had your own child you change mm. your mind one day you're just young and selfish i've heard all of that and yeah. you know i i can give them reason after reason after reason for why i don't want children and then most of the time I say, when, why, why did you decide to have a child? And they go, oh, I just got pregnant and I kept it. It's like, oh, wow, well, you, you really put loads of thought into that. I've put loads of thought into why I don't want them. And yeah, I'm being called selfish. So yeah. it's like, it yeah. just, it winds me up, I'll be honest. Yeah, and I, I, I can understand completely why. Absolutely. Um, I am sorry that you're being dragged through this storyline on a podcast. <laughs> uh, um, maybe we'll have to do um, Tenacity in a minute. <laughs> this podcast is going to be four minutes long by February. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, because Rue and Marilyn, you can just do that in five seconds. <laughs> Rue's a cow. <laughs> Judging. No, it's, um, it's, no it's, not, it's not that. It's, you know, I, people will get sick of me hearing about it so I don't want to bang on about it so much I haven't brought it up till now but it's just these scenes where he was like oh it's not a good enough reason I was like no I'm no yeah <laughs> I know and, and the Sit thing down. is later later on he's like yeah your reasons are your reasons I respect it you know it's lip service don't you yeah. Yeah. you just know it you just know he doesn't mean it so he's still um, thinking I'll ask her in a year because it's just bad timing yeah. Yeah. and she'll change yeah. she'll change her mind because she changed her mind on that other stuff yeah Oh, yeah. dangerous and, you know, territory. And we're, you know, we're in Home and Away Land, everything's sped up in, th- in about three episodes. You'd be like, what about now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a month. <laughs> so they'll, they'll, see a, they'll see a baby on the beach or something. And like, oh, God. Yeah. Mm, can imagine yeah. it, can't you? Yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Uh, he's, he, oh, Lordy, he has hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Cash is pushing Eden away this week yeah. um, Remember on first look last week We were a bit like oh, When we read this We were a bit like Oh what now Everyone's fighting You know oh, God's sake um, And I did like the line though She needed to wear it I thought You're as unemployed as I am So focus <laughs> on yourself <laughs> I know Oh bless him I did feel for him Because I thought He's not the kind of person that sort of lashes out like that he probably feels really guilty for saying it but I don't blame him do you no no I, I saw I'm a bit torn with this so I'm, I sort of understand because she's coming from a place of concern isn't she yeah. she's got his back he's been suspended for helping out these reprobates that have rocked up <laughs> and she doesn't know them from Adam she doesn't know their history she, or she certainly no. wouldn't understand their relationship you know zonks before they were ever no. a thing of course she's got his best interests at heart and I feel like I would probably be similar to Eden should I be in that situation where my other half ends up suspended for helping somebody out I think I would probably lash out a little bit as well to be honest mm. yeah. just being honest whether that's the right or wrong thing to do I feel like that's something I would probably need to do to get something off my because chest because she didn't she didn't know about it as well so if you've been in the dark mm, and then you've mm. found out and then you find out when it's too late you know you've not it's happened and you, he's been suspended there's nothing you can do about it you just have to deal with that and you don't you know you haven't been told I think that's what she struggled with the fact that she's just yeah. had this sprung on her whereas if yeah. she knew if she knew when Irene knew maybe she would have been different you know yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if she was sort of it, yeah, if she was in on it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and that has been a bit of bone of contention, but never mm. really explored, hasn't it? You know, she stormed out of bed or, you know, she didn't want him to get in trouble. And, you know, th- that has been a bit of a bit of bone mm. of contention, but not enough to, you know, disappear for days to write a song. Yes. Um, and she's not going to be aware of Harper and Dana because they're riddled with guilt, but she doesn't know that because she doesn't know them. She doesn't speak to them. Do you know what no. I mean? Like she's yeah. not, she's also not got like the insight from the other side. 
I mean, I say riddle with guilt, but Dana's still planning on going back to nursing, <laughs> getting on with her life, you know. Yeah, she's getting that uh, uh, application to uh, the old northern districts, isn't she? As we speak. Yeah. yeah, convenient, convenient, mm. I think so, I think <laughs> so. Um, I, what, what do we think of Irene this week? Irene, she's there asking, <laughs> legally... Where do I and Harper stand with mm. the law? <laughs> like <laughs> legally, you broke it. <laughs> yeah, legally, you're over mm. the line. Uh, mm. Yeah, I know. I I just feel really bad for her because she she didn't get any choice really. I mean, she keeps saying I went along with it. I went along with it. She knew for about twenty four hours about this. Then she came home, and then you know the detective was on the doorstep a minute later before she even knew that Dana existed and all this sort story. She got yeah. swept up in it. So she's saying I went along with it and I agreed to it, but I don't think she really did. I think she just didn't really have much of a choice because no. as she said at you know at the time, I'm not the kind of person that would throw two innocent women out, you know, and when they're in this situation. And she isn't because she's a nice person. So I don't really feel like she had a huge amount of choice to get involved I think it was it was too late they're already in a house you know so yeah I know and I would I would argue yeah she was in a rock and a hard place she had like you said yeah. she didn't have much choice but I would also argue Irene can sort of be accountable for her whereabouts you know yes. most of most of the hiding her as you say yeah. was done before Irene came home yeah. and we know she was in the bedroom when Madden paid them a visit um, and then the, when he left, she shooed him off, didn't she? And then said, right, open your bedroom door. Yeah. I'm Irene. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so, and then it was all, like you say, pretty much uncovered from there. She she could argue if they wanted to try and get her off that, you know, she wasn't in town and she could prove that, you know, her yeah. phone could be on the highway, you know, yeah. you know. But like, if they get the timeline straight, they could all concoct to get her off <laughs> if yeah. they really wanted. I Unless think, I'm just I simplifying it. I think I think they'll probably take that into account if if we do get to see a court case, which I don't know whether we will or not, because we didn't get to see Justin, did we? So I don't oh, know whether we'll get to see the Irene's. I mm. know. Mm. I don't want to be sat outside the room hearing it from the third person. I, I want to see it. So. I love a good courtroom on a soap. Yeah, objection, Your Honour. It's <laughs> sustained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more I gotta sort of this out. I know. Oh. Say it every time. Say it oh. every time. We but you. isn't jo- John's being good? He says you need to lawyer up, love. You know, John's lovely. Yeah, he's gonna be a. He's you no, know, just like he is with Marilyn, although less so at the minute. Um, <laughs> he's he's a really good friend, isn't he? Palmer is knows J- best. JP Palmer <laughs> knows best, absolutely, <laughs> as Justin knows. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's see. They've gone to get her a lawyer. Let's see what happens. She's not been charged yet, but I feel like it's coming. Major mm. foreshadowing. She's going to get hurled in, isn't she? Right before the season finale. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, next crap. week. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Oh no. Mm. She's going to be behind bars, isn't she? I'm going to be crying to my mince pie. I'm going to to be sat there at Christmas (laughs) pulling your cracker thinking, wonder what Irene's doing right now in jail. (laughs) I wonder if she's got any grog yet. Oh, no. (laughs) I wonder if she's she's eating any turkey in there today. (laughs) (laughs) I bet Maz has took us some tofu (laughs) stir-frying. Oh, scrambled tofu. Oh, no. <laughs> Theo like, would is, love it. It is nice. It's nicer than it sounds. I was like, really? <laughs> Not sure. Yeah. Take your word for it. <laughs> well, let's talk about that then. So, as, as you know, Maz has moved in, hasn't she? Storm um, Maz. Just, mm, Storm Maz. No lid. <laughs> what a blender with no lid, wasn't it? <laughs> your life is like a blender with no lid. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Justin, so hard. I mean, she did say, like, give it to me straight or something, didn't she? But then he was just yeah. like, it just looks like your life is like a blender with no lid, Marilyn. I was like, yeah. whoa. And actually, it's quite a good, quite a good simile or whatever. It, is it a simile that comparison? Uh, it's one of those like, something that I learned in English and forgot many yeah. years later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too old for that um the 
because she knows she, she's making these bad decisions and then she's like mm. spinning all the mess out on everybody else you know yeah. <laughs> like I thought yeah. okay that's quite a good analogy actually um <laughs> is it a and, metaphor uh, I, don't know. Uh, I don't know I don't know uh, ju- I just uh, some, us. some linguist to email in <laughs> ghost on news <laughs> ghost on news <laughs> at gmail.com um We'll invite you on, correct everything. <laughs> It'll be here all year. We Justin... need him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what has happened today? Honestly. I don't know, I don't know. sorry. <laughs> um, he's been rolling his eyes as he doesn't want it. And Leah's like, no, we're helping a friend out. Um, mm. He's suggesting Irene takes her in at one point, but we know her house is full. He's even pointing out the caravan. <laughs> It's got a lot of empty <laughs> caravans in it. <laughs> the, uh, the caravan park is closed, right? A lot of empty vans. <laughs> a lot of uh, empty beds. <laughs> I think we would probably go out in the night and set a fire to it. Oh, Jesus. We've had a few caravan fires in the past. We don't mm. need that again, do we? Mm. No, we don't. Yeah. Um, Maz, she's very grateful, isn't she? She seems to remind them just at the moment where they're about to thin her off. You know, mm. she's like, you are such good friends, taking me in. This is a really hard time. So uh, my heart's going out to Marilyn still. I know there are, you know, Justin in particular is quite annoyed. I, I don't know why as well. What's Theo's issue? Like the attitude of Justin and Theo <laughs> regarding Marilyn this week actually has really disappointed me. <laughs> I got really well, cheesed off with it. I think it, I, I tried to remind myself what happened last year. They did mention it on the show, actually. So I was like, oh, they do remember this happened because I mentioned it on the last pod. It I was did. like, yeah. there was a time last year at some point when Leah did a disappearing act. She went off to Cyprus to see uh, VJ or something. I can't remember. Her runaway son, yeah. And I'm sure there was something going on with Justin or Theo and Marilyn had to move in with them for some reason to look after something, to help them with something. And she basically drove them up the wall because she was they couldn't eat meat in front of her. And Theo was really annoyed about that. Um, and then obviously like she was just there all the time and they were like, oh, like this is awkward. We, we don't know how to talk to you and like we can't be comfortable around you. They just don't really know her very well, do they? She's, yeah, but it's she's, rude. It is rude. It's horrible. And she's in a horrible, horrible, horrible place. Um, and it's temporary, hopefully. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's not forever. Mm. It's just a friend. And like you say, she works. It's not like she's going to be sat on the sofa yeah. all day long. That's it not is, what the bay is rude. about. The community no. and, the, and, the, 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 and the summer bay people. That's not what that's about. And I'm not being funny. Shoe on the other foot. She mm. would be doing anything and everything. For any of yeah. those two. And I got really cheesed off with them. So if she you're would. listening, <laughs> wind your neck in. <laughs> or you'll have me to answer to. <laughs> Ooh, you're getting on your ramp this week. <laughs> I love it. It's not me for a no, change. It really bugged me. Really bugged Aww. me because I thought there's no it's uncalled for. And I know she's unaware. Mm. You know, and you know, in that moment where Leah's like, oh, "Well, is she? Is she? Or is, I don't know whether I. You know, sometimes do you, you think, think she knows. I don't know. You know, with Marilyn, like sometimes she's cleverer than she makes out, and she's yeah, not mm. manipulative because that sounds a bit that sounds a bit too devious for Marilyn. But I don't know whether she's she always seems to have this little heart pulling uh, speech ready whenever Justin looks like he's going to tell her that she can't move in and then she's like you're such a nice person Justin and you've come to my rescue and you oh you're so good you're such a good friend and I'm like does she know like and she's you know getting in there before we can tell her or is she completely oblivious because I don't know with Marilyn she's not daft mm. but they do write a daft don't they so mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd not thought too much into it. I just thought it was a major coinciding. But maybe you're right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe know. she, because she's not giving him chance to speak. Is she? That scene you're <laughs> talking about where he goes to the diner. Yeah. And um, because Leah said, if you don't want her here, you tell her. Mm. And then he comes back home with her. <laughs> Leah's <laughs> face. <laughs> Leah knows. She's already got the bed ready. She knows he can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> she's like right you go and tell her i'll go and make the bed because you're definitely bring it, bringing her back <laughs> i love it oh, yeah i don't know because she was just like oh you're such a nice person before you even got a chance to say anything and i was like does she know like or mm. is she is she oblivious mm. and this is just coincidence i don't know well she she she's got a backbone we know she can stand up for herself when mm. 
when yeah. she needs to. And of course, Mr. Stewart rings, doesn't he? And mm. she has to lie to him. And this phone call seems to do something to whatever what her opinion. And she ends up being back at Summer Bay House when Rue gets home because Lee has gone to pick her up. Mm. And that makes for quite an interesting confrontation because Rue doesn't want her there. And there's 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 a standoff almost, isn't there? <laughs> of yeah. her trying to say, I'm not going anywhere, I'm helping you. Mm. Um and in the end, I mean we read this on first look and we sort of guessed this was going to happen. <laughs> she threatens Rue mm-hmm. and says, look, you've got two options. Either I stay here and I help you or I call your dad and tell him everything. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> I'm going like, to top you in, mate. <laughs> you would dare. <laughs> you know? Like, this is like, this is like the biggest, biggest worst thing that could happen to Rue. She's just been blown up, mate. You know what I mean? Like, why is she scared of Alf? But yeah, yeah. And I thought, go on, Marilyn. You tell her. You tell her, little mm. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was well into that. What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I concur. Yeah, get, you know, good for her. Um, mm. it, I just think it's it's a really horrible situation for Maz because obviously with the Heather stuff last year and she was lying to them, wasn't she, for ages and saying like, oh, I don't know her and blah, blah, not telling them that that was her daughter and everything that happened to her. She didn't want, she told Leah, didn't she? But then she was going, don't tell them, they'll think differently than we were. So she was lying to them for weeks and weeks and weeks. And they've, they've obviously brought that up quite a lot over the last year and said, mm-hmm. well, you know, you lied to us, Marilyn, and why don't you just tell us the truth? And why did you go along with this? And why can't you, like, why can't you just be honest? So we've had these conversations before about her lying and not being honest. And obviously now she's being forced to lie to Mr. Stewart. And when he rang, I think that was the last straw where she was like, I've been told by him not to lie and I'm having to do it and I'm not happy yeah. about it. Yeah. So I can kind of see where she's coming from with this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like she's just, she's just thought, F it. Yeah. Caution to the wind. She's going to hate me, but I'm going to do it. And yeah. I th- I, it's that strong will that Marilyn has that, you, like you say, isn't often written into her dialogue, isn't it? Um, and it's it's more evidence about how, you know what you were saying earlier that she would do anything for anyone, and like Justin and Theo, if the if the tables were turned, Marilyn would be there for them. And it's just more yeah. evidence of that. You know how good a friend is she that she won't take no from someone who basically is saying that she hates them and doesn't want to see them and wants them to not not any be anywhere near her. And she's still going. No, I'm going to help you. I'm not going to let. Yeah. I'm not going to let you sit and suffer. I'm going to get the doctor out to see you. I'm going to make sure that you're okay. Yeah. Even though you hate me, I'm going to do all yeah. this stuff. And that's yeah. just proof that she's such a good friend, and she would do that for anybody. So, absolutely, oh, yeah. It's heartbreaking. I mean, it is. Even the doctor, when she comes, threatens it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll drive <laughs> you to hospital myself. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, someone needs to be here they were the conditions of you being discharged mm. um very awkward breakfast the next morning <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah the whole thing was mm. kind of awkward wasn't it but mm. oh, they're just like squabbling children aren't they i'm gonna tell dad on you oh. yeah yeah it's gonna be a broken ornament or something next week i'm <laughs> sensing it oh, mm. oh dear. <laughs> Iron in sheets. What are your thoughts on iron in bed sheets? <laughs> Can't be asked. Can't be asked. <laughs> oh, who's got time for that? <laughs> <laughs> Not even if I had no job, no podcast to do. I wouldn't know. I still wouldn't find the time in the day to iron my bed sheets. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that. My mum has. My mum's ironed bedding and pillowcases and stuff. And I've sat and just looked at her like, you're mad. Um yeah, I but, know somebody no. as well who does it, and I'm not going to out her on the pod because she listens. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know who it is. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, yeah no, no, um, not, not for me. Same. I'm glad. I'm glad we're on that same page. <laughs> Although we do, doubt it. we are agreeing with Justin now, which is slightly worrying. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, but only on one issue. One thing. I mean, it's, yeah, an, it's an important issue, you know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all these world issues. You know, we've got hunger, climate change, Brexit. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll agree with him on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Justin's won a comp. We'll briefly mention this. It was a bit yeah. random at the end of the week. He's won. He's won an all-inclusive holiday, and they're off tomorrow. 
Where are they going? Where, are they where, going? where did he say where they were going? Have I missed the location? Uh, if you have, so have I. Should we make it up? Yeah. I think I think they've gone to Hibiscus Island. Oh. Um, Very nice. To sing other songs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, on karaoke. With Pierce Brosnan or whoever. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Okay, that sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. Lucky yeah. him. Yeah, Muriel's there. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible, Muriel. Um, yeah. yeah, let's just, yeah, they've gone somewhere. It's slap up. He's won it on the radio, did he say? He said um, it was a competition for local businesses. And I, because she said, how did you win it? And he was like, did you enter it? And he was like, no, they're like, they're rewarding local businesses. And I was like, what? Oh, so someone's phoned him and scam, scam alert. It does. Scam it, alert. it doesn't sound. Yeah, I don't know. I'd want to see some paperwork. I'd be honest. Yeah. It did sound a bit. Eh? Yeah, uh, it did a bit, didn't it? Um, let's see. I mean, it, what what it does mean though is that they're out of the picture, which yeah. means Marilyn and Rue are left to defend themselves, rip each other's air out and run across the caravan park with one's weave in one's hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does mean it's, they're going to kick off, aren't they, without them to allow yeah. to influence the calming nature. Marilyn will be burning sage, God knows where. <laughs> uh, right. Um, we need to talk about Marley and his moves because that seems to... <laughs> tap into this week as well yeah. um his videos right i'm sorry but I, i'm going to just get this off my chest before i actually go into describing the recap because okay. Okay. i'm like did i see a different video like why is everyone going what <laughs> i love for this I think we did see a different video because we put a different video out on our socials didn't we <laughs> that's very very true <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> ma mating Marley, <laughs> magic Marley, and his <laughs> fancy footwork. Oh, thank you, Farney. Thank you, Farney, for the idea, because I appreciate that, because it's given as many laughs this, this week, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A whirling <laughs> dervish. It takes the bow. <laughs> he starts with a bow. <laughs> It was perfect. It was so good. Thank you, Emma. You're a genius. Look at the footwork. <laughs> Fancy footwork. I'm burning down. Well done, because that is your work. Well done. <laughs> it was Farney's idea. She gave me the clip. It was oh, just God. me getting frustrated trying to sync it all together with the audio. I was like, I ah! <laughs> a cracking job you've done. Can't tell you how many times I've watched it. <laughs> So am I. <laughs> it gets funnier. There's a, there's a certain bit that every time it happens, I cry laughing. <laughs> it's like a noise, and he's spinning round as it happens, and I just die. <laughs> I love it. If people don't know what we're talking about, go on our. We've put it on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. I think haven't we? Magic Marley video with mm. alternative audio. Let's call it that. Yeah, 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 hilarious, hilarious. Well, um, everyone's going wild. It's gone viral, right? <laughs> the whole man and his dog has seen this video, and everyone, there are hens clamoring to rebook him. I know. Believable. <laughs> 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 I honestly don't understand this. I, I don't, don't understand it either. Like, of all the things you could do on your hen party, this is your last hurrah as before, you know, before you get married, you know, and you, you want to go to Salt for a meal and watch Marley with his fancy footwork and his whirling dervish. I'm just, <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> sorry. You've gone again, haven't you? Oh, God. Oh. Dearing me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if I was bored on a Friday night, but my hen party? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had a hen party and I probably never will have one, but I don't think I would do that. No. No. No, not 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 if you want friends. Um <laughs> Xander's like paying him double. 
Um, <laughs> Page of nothing last time. <laughs> What's double of nothing? <laughs> <laughs> I had a clock there. <laughs> Double of nothing oh. is double nothing. Yeah. We're making a right hash of this section. Mm. Um, let me just. Oh, I can't feel my cheeks. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at my notes. <laughs> we've, we've made it funnier than the original clip, though, so it's fine. That's true. That is very true. Very entertaining. Right, Rose has found out, hasn't she? That's mm. what I need to say about it. Rose oh, has that's found right. out and, and she's this given was, it. This was unbelievable as well because there's Kirby putting dresses on Instagram and hashtagging salt in. And then, oh, look on the hashtag for salt. Here's Marley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why would you hashtag salt on your dress? But anyway, never mind. <laughs> unbelievable, but whatever. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I can go on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> she's not happy is she so she's like giving him loads of opportunity to come clean that he's had a dance on a video and I'm just like this is ridiculous because you, you and to? I were like what have what? You, he's done <laughs> I know what did he, what's he done wrong really apart from well, criminal she should arrest him for criminal <laughs> dancing <laughs> she, she is literally a copper and she could arrest him for that display public display of cringe but... that was that, that willing to be <laughs> <laughs> cringeworthy arrestable offence I think you'll find not in Australia, because it is some kind of Australian, <laughs> Australian dance. It's no nut bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we've lost it. <laughs> we've lost it officially now. Are we going to get this back on track? I don't think we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We've officially lost it. <laughs> uh, um... I'm only drinking Lucas <laughs> <laughs> so he has to come clean. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to plow on here. Right. He has to, he has to come clean because she's like, I've seen the video eventually. Mm. And it's all a big, you know, hoo ha. Then she's like, dance for me. <laughs> Paint me like one of your French girls, Jack. <laughs> 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 no, lost it. <laughs> even even the promised wife's seen it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the promised wife. Oh my god. The promised wife saw it in Hinky Dinkyville and drove all the way down the coast. <laughs> that's, that's, what? That, that's how good it was. <laughs> that's how good it was. She hasn't seen him for five years. That dance. Wow. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> it, it awoke some feelings. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> I'm so horny. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Yeah. <laughs> she loves an Australian dance. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> How are we going to get through this? I think we're just going to have to call it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, sum it up. Rose and Marley don't ever talk about anything important because Rose knows nothing about the promised wife. <laughs> it's news to her that Marley ever had a girlfriend or. A promised wife. What do yeah. these people? What do they talk about? <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I think that would come up. You know, it's like they've been together a while, haven't they? Wouldn't like mm. exes and you know, have you ever been in a serious relationship and that kind of stuff normally comes up in conversation, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. Especially if you, you know, you're gonna have to marry someone. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I start dating someone oh. and they and they're you know they're promised to someone else, I kind of want to know that. Don't yeah, you? but also it's a bit more linked, isn't it? Because Rose didn't really get off to the best of start with Marley's family, and 
Molly's yeah. family and her family, they're all intertwined. She knows mm. everybody. She's been up at the house. They, they're, She's very friendly with Mother, Mother Bear, who hates Rosie's guts, you know. <laughs> so there's all that going to go on, isn't there? Um, well, I, I was thinking about this. I was having a, you know, I do all my overthinking in the shower. I was having a mm. shower thinking about <laughs> thinking about Marley and Rose. <laughs> would you believe? <laughs> Not like that. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, you're right. So Mum wasn't a, wasn't keen on Rose to start with because of, because of the whole cop thing, was she? She came around eventually. They had a bit of a, you know, uh, she got over it ish, didn't she? But it still. Still wasn't like mega mega friendly, was it? It was just like, oh, I'll you know, I'll get past it, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I was thinking, yeah. So this Zara, she's not seen Marley for five years, but she seems to be in and out of Alandra's life, babysitting her kids. Yeah. She mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, hadn't seen Marley for years and years, and I'm thinking, has Alandra kind of steered her to come down to the bay to, on a on a mission to break Marley and Rose up because actually the family aren't that keen on Rose is that is that what's happening and also I feel like I don't know about you I feel like this has missed the the spot for me like this is Mr Mark and what I would have preferred to see rather than this random coming to town based on the fact that she's seen Magic Marley video which is a bit weird I would have mm. rather have seen um Marley take Rose back home and meet the rest of his family because he keep being told about all these sisters he's got. So yeah. that would have been really nice to see her go and meet the family. And then if this Zara is so much in their lives, she could have been at the house and it could have been a and is this one of your sisters? No, this is my promised wife. What? Mm. That would I think that would have been a better scene. Yeah. Not only that, I, I agree actually. I think and also we're itching to learn more about his family, aren't we? And, yeah. and meet more of them. So I think yeah. that would have been a much richer way of doing it, excuse me. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's why it kind of hit the but it feels funny. Like I'm I kind of laughing at this story now because it feels ridiculous that she's seen this video and then come all the way down to to see him after yeah. five years and apparently lives in the pockets of his sister and his family. I'm like, this doesn't yeah. make any sense. Load of rubbish. And why why is he not because also uh, typical homers, on top of all that, it's got that extra, it's just gone extra. And she's mm. like, and when I finish uni, you promised we'd get married, so here I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Okay. If you better put a ring on it. Like yeah. and he's um and, and Marley's being a bit shirty about it, mm. in my opinion. He's not he's not he's being a bit wishy washy. He's not telling her to rack off. No. You know, we're ancient history. And he's keeping it from Rose. Yeah. It, it just you know, you just like Yeah. What is this all about? I don't you know. know. I think it's just to distract us for five episodes and then she'll go away again. Do you do you or do you think it's a way we can break Rose and Marley up? Because it could honestly, be. I told mm. I text you just now. I'm happy to sit through it if if, that, if that's what <laughs> that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not going to lie and say that they they're our favourite couple. Um, because I don't feel like the chemistry is there with them. Even the kissing scenes we've had this week, I was like, it doesn't feel authentic. It feels like they're they're almost laughing when they're kissing, but not in a not in a I'm you know when you laugh and you kiss and it's kind of because you're having fun it just feels like awkward it just feels like mm. you're watching someone someone kiss that doesn't really want to like they're doing it for a bet it's like that it's like oh yeah yeah she's got more chemistry with her brother than she's got with her boyfriend <laughs> so, <laughs> you know her brother, it's, her brother it's, wishes he has that <laughs> work <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he'd do anything for Marley. He would. He's the envy of the internet. Oh God, oh, we're making that joke public. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to feel. I just think it, it's a missed opportunity. It would have been nice for them to go home to his family, and then if we had to, if this Zara storyline had to happen, it would have been, I think, more interesting if it had been at his family home. Yeah. And she's she's there and she's still integrated with the family. And it, that's weird, isn't it? When you're you're the current partner, but then the ex is still there and the ex is still hanging around with the parents and with the family. And then they're there in the mm. family home and you're you're there to meet the family. And then they're there. And it's mm. like, oh, it's weird. It's like one of those. It's like a rom-com film, you know, like a Jennifer Aniston kind of. You can imagine that happening or a, or a J-Lo kind of rom-com. Yeah. 
yeah, you're right. I think I think I would have preferred to see that actually as well. Yeah. Thank you for listening. We will be back with more episode discussion from Summer Bay soon. Until then, join the discussion online at Coastal News Pod.